November 2011. Phil looked at the scars on his right forearm. What colour were they? Red? Pink? Purple? Mr King would have known. He was pretty sure his shirt sleeves hadn't ridden up high enough at Tidewells for his interviewer to see. Get this job. 2012 could be a year of change. A fresh start in a new city felt like a good idea. That's what it would be if he got the job, Phil told himself. A fresh start. He wasn't running away. Why did Mr King just, just disappear like that? Where did he go? As the train crawled back north through grey fields, the woman across the carriage was on her mobile again. Yellow? But Gareth, it can't be yellow. She frowned and rubbed her left temple with the middle three fingers of her free hand. But it said Magnolia Flush on the tin. Phil felt in his coat pocket for his own mobile, containing the unopened email from Grace. He knew, at some point, he would have to read it. For now, though, its contents were a mystery. Like the tin of paint in Mr King's art class, 20, no, 25, no, 30 years ago. Mr King, with his leather jacket, his triangular beard, his thinning mousy hair, with just enough roots on top to qualify as a side parting rather than a comb over. Mr King with his funny views, as old man Campbell and the deputy headmaster used to mutter to the other teachers when he thought the kids couldn't hear. I'll give five pounds to anyone who can tell me what colour that paint is. Phil remembered the classroom, small windows high up the wall on one side, and larger ones looking out onto a courtyard of weeds and paving slabs. For an art classroom, it's allowed very little natural light. In the middle of the room was a huge table, six smaller tables pushed together, in the middle of which Mr King had placed an open tin of pink paint. Of course it's not pink, you fool, Harrison. I can't believe you'd fall for that. Now, come on, think logically. They guessed every colour they could imagine. It's not a trick question. Phil had never forgotten the answer. Well, how yellow is it? The woman across the aisle sighed loudly. Now listen, now you listen to me, Gareth. You'll have to tell Marjorie it's unacceptable. We cannot have a guest area that looks like a giant egg yolk. Black. Mr King had looked back at 25 disbelieving faces. A tin of paint is always black until it's opened. Phil remembered an explanation that involved chemicals reacting with light, and Mr King prising off the lid to reveal the paint was pink, was pink after all. And 24 members of that class looked at the pink and tried to make sense of what they had just heard. And all Phil felt was exhilaration as he swept his hand across the table and sent the whole tin splattering into the big windows. And Mr King, even Mr King, looked taken aback as the classroom gasped and tried to suppress its laughter as Phil said calmly, I'm sorry sir, but that is absolute bollocks. The month of detentions, the thrashing at home, the pain for the damage to be cleaned up, that impetuous moment cost Phil a great deal. But was it any worse than just running away, like Mr King did? Why did he run away? Hello? Hello? The train was trundling through a mobile black spot. Gareth, can you hear me? She glared at the phone's touch screen, then punched in a number. Janine, it's me. I've just spoken to Gareth. You'll never believe what colour they painted the guest room. Black, Phil muttered. There were many rumours about Mr King, that his wife had left him for old Bank Campbell, that he lived in a log cabin, that he once killed a burglar with an axe, that he didn't have a first name. <laughs> Several of the girls in Phil's year, and one or two of the boys, claimed they, they had been to Mr King's house, although none of them ever came back with the same description. Then there was the graffiti. No one had ever owned up to the graffiti. The woman opposite had, for now, finished complaining about the yellowness of the guest area and was studying a colour chart she had pulled from a folder. Phil took out his mobile and saw he'd received a text message. Mr Walker, we would like to offer you the position of Assistant Manager at Tideswells. Please call me on 02380 Robert. Phil wore long sleeve shirts for work, when it worked. Some people smoked when stressed, he cut his right arm. Never the left. Shamefully, he had done it one weekend when Grace was over and she was seven or eight. Rather than scream and run off, she had asked him what he was doing. It was Phil who had freaked out first, sworn and told her to get out. The visit stopped after that. Phil decided it was time to open the email. It had been an effort to track down Grace's address. And he hadn't expected her to reply. He was nervous about what she would say. He touched the screen on his phone and waited as two arrows circled at the top. Finally, words. Hello Dad, feels a bit weird hearing from you again. Things are fine, 
Mum's not been too well, but she's battling on. Just started uni. It's been good so far. Not sure about a coffee as I'm pretty tied down with coursework at the moment, but I'll let you know when I find a free date. Take care, Grace. Phil wondered just how much university coursework a first year student could be tied down with. She hadn't even told him why she was studying. Gareth, it's me again. The woman opposite was back on her mobile. Did you hang up on me earlier? No, you listen to me. I want you to go and see Marjorie right now and sort this out. Tell her if she doesn't agree to have the whole room repainted in magnolia flush, then you, that you should start legal proceedings against her. A pause. Have you never heard of a solicitor, Gareth? Phil reached into the bag under his seat for a knife. Thank you.